So good evening, ladies and gentlemen, students, teachers from all across Arkansas. Uh, I'm Dustin Seaton, the president of Arkansans for Gifted and Talented Education, or otherwise known as AGIT. You can check out our website, giftedarkansas.org, for more information about our, our organization, as well as other programs like the one you're about to watch tonight. Um, I'm very excited to introduce our, our speaker tonight to talk about one of the best gifted programs in the state of Arkansas, the Arkansas Governor School, which has been at the last three years and for the next three years will be hosted at Arkansas Tech University. Uh, if you're interested in uh, our organization, Agate, again, you can go to our website uh, or check out our Twitter and Facebook. If you're watching us live on Facebook, then you're already there. Uh, we do the things like this throughout the semester, usually in the evening. Uh, they are recorded as well. So if you can't uh, stay for the entire duration and want to come back and check it out, feel free to do so on our website or on our Facebook page uh, at Gifted Arkansas on Facebook and Gifted Arkansas on Twitter. All right, with that being said, I'm very, like I said, I'm very excited to introduce our speaker tonight, Dr. Jeff Woods, the director of the Arkansas Governor's School program. I believe this is like the 43rd year. Is that right, Dr. Woods? I think that's right. It's 42 yeah. or 43. It's been going yeah. on for a, a long time. And there's, if anybody has uh, knows of anyone from Governor's School, the, the alumni is very proud of the program. It's something that we have nurtured and protected as the gifted community because we we always are trying to find things to help with our secondary gifted students. And so our Aegis program and our uh, governor school program is some, some, some of the things that we're most proud of in our state. Uh, I can say last year, almost a year ago, it was November 16th, 2020, Dr. Woods and Dr. Lacey, the other director at the governor school, did a, a webinar for us. And it was in the midst of COVID where we didn't know what it was going to be like and so forth. So we're excited to hear about what's changed, how the summer 2021 went, and all that being said. Some quick housekeeping. Uh, I will moderate. So if you have any questions that uh, you would like to ask Dr. Woods uh, or anything about Governor School or Agate for that matter, feel free to utilize the Q&A box at the bottom or the chat feature to make comments. Uh, I'm also watching the, the comment section on our Facebook Live page. So again, with that being said, Dr. Woods, I'm going to turn it over to you and let you introduce um, the, the Governor's School program. Great. Thanks, Dustin. I really appreciate uh, you all having me again for this. So if you're not familiar, Governor's School is a four-week residential program for the best and brightest of the state's high school rising seniors. So uh, students between their junior and, and senior year are eligible to come. Um, last year, uh, we were lucky and were able to go back to face-to-face. -to -face. Uh, two years ago, because of COVID, we had to do everything online. Um, it was an interesting experience. I think it went well for what it was, but we were all really pleased to be back on campus. Um, this year, we got through about three weeks of the program. Um, we did constant testing of students for uh, COVID. Uh, we had a couple of cases um, come up and we thought, you know, uh, just out of an abundance of caution, uh, we moved the last week online. So we're hoping this summer to have the full residential experience get through all four weeks of the program on campus at Arkansas Tech. And uh, so you know, cross your fingers that COVID cooperates and, and we're able to do that. So one of the first things that, that I always tell uh, students and, and teachers and parents uh, is, you know, why do governor school? Why, you know, take this month out of your life to, to experience this? Um, there's four basic reasons. Um, there's a lot more reasons than this, but these are, these are the, the four that come up most often. Number one is college applications. Um, Arkansas Governor School is a nationally recognized uh, governor school. It's actually, um, it, it's, it's one of the oldest and uh, it is recognized by a lot of other states as one of the best. Uh, in fact, a lot of other programs are based on Arkansas's governor school. Um, anywhere you apply to college, uh, they will recognize what a governor school is. They know it's a competitive program. They know it's prestigious and it will help give you a leg up in college applications. And if you go to college in the state, it can help with scholarships and things like that because uh, people uh, oftentimes on, on those boards these days were actually AGS students. 
uh, we've been doing this for over 40 years. And so um, a lot of the people uh, who are uh, who were governor school students before are, are still around and, and helping out with the education system. So college applications is number one. Number two, it's completely free. Uh, in other states, you have to pay for governor school. We are lucky in Arkansas that the state legislature still completely funds governor school. So all student tuition, housing, board is paid for by the state of Arkansas. Um, so it's completely free still, which is, uh, um, again, it, that's gotten to be more and more rare in the country. So Arkansas continues to be free. Number three, there are no grades, uh, which uh, makes teachers nervous, uh, but makes students very happy. Uh, but what we found is that, and, and that's been the long tradition at Governor's School, and what we found is that students are innovative and creative in very different ways when they don't have those procedural pressures, when they're not chasing a grade or, you know, uh, chasing, if they were in a job, they, they'd be, you know, uh, chasing their salary or, you know, even doing things with the pressure of teachers or parents or people in their home communities looking over their shoulders. Um, they really act in different ways when they're sort of learning for learning's sake. And governor school very much um, invests in that. And so there are no grades. Once you're in, you're in. And then um, we use the time really to explore. Finally, there are, uh, it's the lifelong connections that really made governor school special. Um, part of that, of course, is connections to the faculty. We take faculty from uh, all of the, the universities in the state. Um, most of the four-year universities were represented last year in the faculty. Uh, also, uh, gifted and talented teachers and AP teachers and, and others from around the state are also faculty members. Um, so there's the connections there. Also connections to alumni. We have an alumni day, um, connection to speakers and, and other people who come on campus. But the biggest one, of course, is the peer-to-peer -peer connections. Uh, the influence that students have on each other is remarkable. Uh, they go to governor's school and they meet people um, uh, that share similar interests, um, that have uh, similar skills or other skills that they might be interested in. Um, we know people who have met in governor's school and uh, have met their spouse uh, there and are still married. I know people who have met business partners at Governor's School and they're still business partners. Um, so there's some really special relationships that develop. Um, let me add one other reason to do this. Those are the main four, but I think one of the last ones is that this is a really important time in students' lives. Uh, they're getting ready to be seniors in high school. They're going to decide where they go to college. They, they're thinking about what they want to do with their lives and what the careers might be. Um, <clears throat> they are going to vote for the first time in a year. Uh, I think they're coming to grips with sort of new responsibilities and a new world that might be open up to them. And having that month to just take off and think about who you are and what you want to do with your life and how you can contribute to your society. Uh, makes it an incredibly special environment. So those are the basic reasons, right? College applications, completely free, no grades, lifelong connections. Uh, and then we just reach people at a really special time. <clears throat> so let me show you a quick presentation. Uh, I, won't, uh, I won't belabor this too much because I know the world doesn't need another PowerPoint presentation, but... <laughs> I'm gonna give you a brief one anyway. All right, so um, if you're not familiar with governor schools, they started in the 1960s in North Carolina. Uh, originally, they were designed to keep gifted and talented students in the state to start businesses and go to college uh, because there was a lot of uh, so-called brain drain uh, out of North Carolina. They were going to other places to get jobs and things like that. And North Carolina wanted to keep them at home. Um, there's still some of that. Don't get me wrong. The governor will come and, and talk to the students and make a pitch for giving back to Arkansas. 
but much more these days, it's really a, a place where we challenge the best and brightest students in the state to solve contemporary problems. Um, and honestly, we're looking for students that are intellectually and emotionally mature enough to sort of take on that challenge, right? To deal with those contemporary issues directly, talk about them with their peers and sort of find their, think about their place in the world in the midst of all of those things that, that are going on around them. Uh, North Carolina, or in Arkansas, uh, uh, governor schools started, uh, the first session was in, in the summer of 1980. Legislation was passed in 1979 during the Clinton uh, gubernatorial administration. Um, it was at Hendricks for a long time, uh, moved to Arkansas Tech University three years ago. Uh, Arkansas Tech just got uh, another three-year grant to host uh, governor school. Um, that renews every three years, the, the grant process. And uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens in the next three years. But uh, right now it's on the campus of Arkansas Tech University. All right, so when you apply to governor school, um, you apply in one of nine disciplines. Uh, think of these as kind of majors. We call them area one. Uh, we accept up to 400 rising high school seniors. Uh, but when we accept them, we accept them in one of these particular programs. So there's art, drama, choral music, instrumental music, English language arts, mathematics, natural science, social science. And then we usually have a special category. Uh, this year, that special category is development engineering. Um, the term development engineering actually comes from the University of California, Berkeley, but it's really engineering to address uh, pressing problems. Um, so think like food, energy, and shelter insecurity. Uh, students will come in and they'll talk about, you know, mechanical engineering and materials engineering and electrical engineering, but it will be geared towards its application uh, to solving some of these issues. So, you know, maybe uh, housing problems after hurricanes hit or water short shortage problems in arid regions, uh, those kinds of things. So that's what we mean by development engineering. Uh, Arkansas Tech ha is a great place. Uh, we have an engineering school. Um, so it's a great place to, to, to offer something like that. And so we wanted to match our facilities uh, with that program. When you apply, when students apply, they apply directly to one of those areas. You can apply to more than one area if you would like. Um, and in fact, your, your chances of getting in probably go up if you apply in more than one area. Uh, but uh, that's up to you. You can apply in one, you can apply in, in, in multiple. Uh, I would suggest probably, you know, not doing more than two or three, uh, just because uh, I think uh, your application sort of gets diffuse if you, if you do more than that. Um, we are interested in students, though, who have kind of multiple interests and complex interests. So we, we always think it's interesting to get a student who's applying both in, you know, say, instrumental music and mathematics. Uh, you know, or development engineering and drama, you know, things that you wouldn't commonly put together, but it kind of shows the, the, the student's sort of diversity of talents. And that's one thing, if you're a student that you might want to emphasize is that, you know, uh, you are a, a person with, um, uh, with interesting combinations of skills and different kinds of backgrounds. We, Justin, do you have a question? Yeah, hey, Dr. Woods, we had a question about the new development engineering course of study. Uh, so students can come from any of the disciplines and, and apply for that. Is there one that it's geared more towards that you would recommend no, students I, of interest? No, so engineering is, um, you know, obviously students aren't going to have a lot of experience in engineering um, unless they go to a specialized school um, that does that kind of thing. Uh, so really students from, from any background can apply in that. 
Uh, I think it's probably more naturally suited for, for students who are interested in the sciences. Um, and uh, in particular, you know, physics and material sciences. Um, it, it tends to sort of attract those students. I think also students that are interested in computer science, uh, it's kind of a natural fit there as well. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's, uh, uh, I mean, it can be any student, but that's, that's generally where we'll get those applications. And then the kind of a follow-up question was, what are the disciplines exactly? And can you apply, or are there set numbers for specific disciplines? Like are there 20 spots for the development engineering or is it just based on a certain number? Now we actually set our numbers based on the applications that we get. Um, we have some historical trends uh, and so, uh, some of the uh, some of the arts, for example, don't tend to have as many applicants as natural science and social science. So natural science and social science, I think last year, you know, we had about 100 students in each of those. Whereas like in art and drama and choral music, we have about 20 students in each of those. But it really depends on the application pool for that year. Um, and we decide on the number of applications that we get, what the interests of the students are, what we're able to um, match with uh, faculty or potential faculty. Um, and so, you know, if, if those trends hold true, you know, we'll have a lot more applications and a lot more students in uh, natural science and social science, uh, a good number in mathematics and English, uh, smaller numbers in art, drama, choral music, and instrumental music, and development engineering. So, um, so I can't tell you, you know, we don't run from a quota from the beginning. Uh, we actually adjust those to student interest. Excellent. And we had a question pop up in the Q&A as well that said, does having some experience in engineering better or worsen your chances of being accepted into the course? Um, I don't think it will worsen uh, your chance by any stretch. I mean, it can only help. Uh, although if you don't have any experience in that, I wouldn't, that's the one area I wouldn't be afraid to apply for. Um, if you have any interest or any sort of background um, that you think would, would be uh, interesting, uh, to add to the mix in development engineering, then uh, I, I would I would pursue that. Um, and again, it's the one area where we don't, you know, we assume that in all the other areas, high school students have experience with those things. They know what those are. They're natural fits for those. Uh, in development engineering, we assume that 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 that's absolutely not the case. And so. We're really more interested in your interest in that program and what you think you might be able to do with the time that you're there. And so if you ever thought that, okay, maybe I want to be an engineer someday, or maybe I want, you know, I've always been interested in um, building products or, or being an inventor uh, for things that help people, you know, this is, the, this is your chance to kind of get your feet wet in that. All right, we're all good. Caught up on questions. All right. Cool. Yeah. Just again, stop me whenever. So anyway, that's area one. When when you apply to area one, uh, you uh, usually write a couple of essays uh, if it's one of the sort of academic things. If it's one of the uh, arts, um, you will also uh, do an audition. But basically, the audition is just filming yourself singing or filming yourself acting or doing those kinds of things. Um, and then we upload those on YouTube and then the, the committees get a hold of those. So you go to a couple of hours of every one classes, uh, Monday through Friday. And then you also go to area two classes um, and all students go to area two. So, uh, you know, if you're an art student, you'll just go to those art classes, but then you'll also go to an area two and an area three class. Area two is uh, basically philosophy. Um, and more specifically, it's epistemology or the nature of knowledge. How do you know what you know? 
Um, there's a lot of ethics involved in this. Uh, there's a lot of uh, reflection about, uh, you know, what's real and what's not real and how you can tell the difference. There's a lot of reflection on the scientific method and how you uh, come to know the world that you, that you live in. Um, Area 2 is basically, uh, it, it's been around since the beginning of the program and it's designed to give students uh, exposure to a discipline that they usually don't have exposure to in Arkansas high schools. Very few Arkansas high schools have any standalone philosophy classes. And so this is a chance for students to learn something new and, and, and something different, and also begin to sort of reflect on, on uh, how they see the world. They also do area three classes. Uh, area three classes um, concentrate on personal and social development. So basically sort of asking uh, who am I and how I fit in the world um, and really, uh, in the last few years, we, we've been uh, we've been very focused on civic engagement um, and community development, right? Uh, so, how can you take your personal skills and your own way of seeing the world and apply those uh, to helping your communities? And we we even want students to be able to develop something that they can take back home uh, to their communities. Um, we also do uh, charitable things uh, as, as student groups and, and other kinds of things that, that follow up on that. Um, and in fact, this cycle, um, last few years, we've added a, a kind of thread and it's a loose thread. It's not you know, a driving force in the program, but we wanted something that crosses over between the different areas and the extracurricular stuff. And so this year's thread is, is uh, community. Uh, we want to talk about how the arts and the humanities and the sciences are used to build communities and um, sustain communities. Uh, and so that idea of community is going to kind of run through through all of these different things. So in addition to the classes, so you go to a couple of hours of area one classes a day you go to an hour of area two and an hour of area three. It's very much like a college schedule uh, and students live in dorms and they, they, they walk to wherever their classes are. And it's very much like a, a, a kind of college environment. But then every afternoon we have opportunities for students to learn all kinds of different things um, that, uh, you know, range from, uh, you know, extraterrestrial life to, um, like puppet making to the history of boy bands. I mean, it could be almost anything. And we run these sessions at 10 after four and 10 after six every afternoon. We run about three or four of them at a time. And students have a choice about which ones they want to go to. They can also choose not to go to them uh, and, and just use that time to hang out. Uh, but those presentations offer all kinds of different opportunities for students. We have impact speakers every week. So these are nationally recognized speakers. The governor is always one of them. Um, but we've had speakers in the last few years on brain hacking, uh, COVID-19, uh, domestic terrorism, systemic discrimination, uh, space travel, um, all kinds of different things. Uh, we also watch movies in common, and that becomes uh, stuff that we discuss in class. And then we have community activities. So, you know, you're staying in a dorm and we do things as groups within the dorm. So we have battle of the halls, junk art, scavenger hunts. We have concerts, dances, glow runs. Uh, we take field trips to Shakespeare Theater, Crystal Bridges, Clinton Library. There's always something going on at, at governor school to fill your extra time. There's also plenty of time to just uh, hang out and reflect and, and, and do what you like as long as you stay on campus. Um, this is Robin, our, our program director. Uh, she's great. Um, she, she sends her hellos. Uh, that's me. Uh, <laughs> this is just uh, some pictures of our food facilities, the, the food facilities are great. Um, we offer all kinds of different food. There's like 13 different stations. The building is, is brand new. Um, there's all kinds of options there and they change all the time. Uh, the staff is great as well. 
we also use this thing called Baswell Tectionary in the middle of campus. We keep an office there, but there's also a Starbucks and a Slim Chickens and we keep pool tables and do open mic nights and things like that there. There's a big patio out front. Um, we don't pay for Starbucks and Slim Chickens, but students can bring money uh, to, to do that if they'd like. Residence halls, we use the, the two newest residence halls on campus, uh, Nutt and M Street. Uh, and our RA staff is all former AGS students, uh, usually around their junior year of college. Yeah, Dustin. Hey, Dr. Woods, we had a couple of questions that are pragmatic from, sounds like students. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, if accepted, would I be able to leave campus and go to my church with my parents on Sundays? Yes. Yeah, so Sundays is the, Sundays are the day where you can have parents check you out of governor's school. Um, we also, if you're not able to to be checked out and and you know get to wherever your home is and back in time to to check back in, uh, we also offer rides to uh, churches, mosques, and synagogues in uh, in Russellville. And so um, you can use uh, the uh, whatever your, your denomination or churches or uh, religious uh, practices, we, we, can, we can help facilitate that in, in Russellville. Uh, but yeah, you can check out on Sundays. Uh, and then a couple of questions about the cost. I, I posted in the chat, it is 100% free, but then they said, is the food free too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the food in the cafeteria is free. It's just the extra stuff. It's like, we're not gonna buy your Starbucks for you, but you can, you can buy that. You can also, uh, actually from the dorms, you can order food from off campus. Like uh, we use, you know, students use DoorDash and things like that. And um, we're usually, uh, we usually allow that to happen as well. So um, you don't have to stick to the food in the cafeteria, although the cafeteria is great. And uh, again, you know, you can live off of what's there and it's completely free. And I can say I helped grade some of the uh, applications and, and whatnot, and we got fed on campus the last few years, and it's wonderful food. I, I enjoy it. Uh, yeah. Another student asked, can I leave for work? No. <laughs> no. When you make a commitment to governor's school, you make it for the, the full month. Um, and uh, no, you can't do work. You also, you know, uh, we don't let you off to go to you know, uh, uh, if you had a, a, a band camp or a choral camp or something like that, or you had cheerleading clinics or you had sporting events, uh, this is a commitment to be there. And when you, when you apply and when you accept going to governor school, you accept that you're gonna be committed to that for the entire month. Uh, if you run into issues with your teachers or coaches or parents or anybody um, and they have questions about that, please have them contact me. Uh, because I'd like to talk them, them through that because I, I think this is a unique opportunity. It only comes once in a lifetime. And I think the things that you, you learn here and the benefits that you, that you get might be um, more important than uh, arguably other things that might be going on. And honestly, if you're doing, if you're working uh, for that month, I want you to think about how much money you make you know, if you're making minimum wage or something like that during that month versus what you're getting for free in terms of uh, room, board, and tuition for that month. Um, I, 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 I would bet that you're making more money going to governor school <laughs> than you would be in your job. Yeah, and I could say I was accepted to governor school when I was in high school and chose to work in the summer. And I regret it to this day that I didn't go to governor school because I, I met a lot of students in college that had, and they already had a close knit of friends and so forth. Uh, it all I'm, off later, by the way. <laughs> yeah, uh, these are people that can get you jobs and get you access to things that you just can't catch. Uh, we had a question: Are you requiring students, teachers, and staff to be vaccinated or wear masks? Um, we do what the state says that we can do on that kind of stuff. And so the state of Arkansas says that we can't do that right now. Um, do we have to share a room? Yes. <laughs> okay. that's, yeah, that's part of the thing at governor's school is that, you know, we want you to have 
the experience of living with somebody that you've never lived with before. Um, that said, you know, all of the women at governor school live on about three floors of a dorm. Uh, all of the men live on about two floors of a dorm. Uh, you're probably only, you know, you're a staircase or a short walk away from the people that you know that are there. Uh, but we want you also to live in a room with somebody that you don't know. Uh, and we do that for pedagogical reasons. We do that because there are amazing learning experiences from that. Um, and we wanna get you outside of your, your sort of normal routine and the people that you know. Uh, and uh, it doesn't mean that you're disconnected from those folks. It's just, you know, it, it's, it's definitely part of the experience. It'll also be your experience in college. And so it's a good chance to, to sort of try that on. All right, we are up to date. Okay. Um, so uh, other facilities at, at, at Tech are great. Um, again, our, 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 our library is fantastic. It's very technology oriented. So we, you know, we have traditional books, but we've also got a lot of eBooks and things like that. Uh, we've got audio labs, those sorts of things for our uh, music students. Uh, we have uh, great recreational facilities. We have this thing called Tech Fit, and, and students have access to the gym uh, for a couple of hours every day. You can check out sports equipment. Uh, you can check out hammocks and go to our hammock grove down here. Uh, we have, you know, all kinds of things going on on campus all the time. Um, and uh, you basically have the same access to the recreational facilities that other students on campus have. Um, so there's a wide range of things that you can you can plug into there. Um, all right, this most important screen. Uh, Arkansas Governor School this year runs from July 5th to August 1st. Again, it's on the, the campus of Arkansas Tech University. Uh, you can apply at www.atu.edu forward slash AGS. But here's the thing, the application process the, the, the first selection process for applications happens at your high school. And your high school can nominate up to 10% of the junior class. So however big the junior class is, that school can nominate up to 10% of that class. But you have to get a nomination from your school to be able to apply, okay? So the schools have these accounts, uh, so if you want to apply for governor school, if you're thinking about this, you need to talk to your counselor, uh, talk to your, your, your GT instructor, and ask them how to get uh, the school's nomination. Once the school nominates you, then you go in and you write your essays and you, you, know, you prepare your audition or whatever things that they ask you to do. Um, I would recommend that the sooner you apply, the better. Uh, now, don't rush it. You need to take your time and, and, and you know, make sure to have somebody else read your, your essays and, and do all of that. But I think your goal ought to be to have your application done before whatever your winter break is. Um, so whenever you get off for the holidays, um, you want to have all of your application done by then. The actual applications are not due until January 24th. Um, but uh, you know what happens when you get back to school in January, there's always all kinds of stuff going on, there's a bunch of distractions, and so it's, it's better just to have your stuff done before whatever your winter break is, and then if you've got a couple extra things that you have to take care of in January, um, then you can do that. If you have any questions, if parents, teachers, coaches, students, anybody has any questions, you can contact us at AGS at atu.edu, just email us at that address. Um, you can also email me directly. It's just jwoods, W-O-O-D-S, at atu.edu, and I'll answer whatever, whatever questions that you have. Um, just for our, uh, our GT teachers, um, school nominations were open October 15th and continue to be open. Um, so, uh, you know, when you're getting your students coming in and, and asking you to apply, 
uh, that's been open for a while and you can get in there and, and if you if you don't have uh, an account already set up, you could set that up. Again, it's all on the website. Um, if you are thinking about applying as a faculty member, which you are absolutely welcome uh, and encouraged to do if, if you've ever wanted to teach a governor school, uh, those applications are due January 1st. Um, like I said, January 24th is student applications. And then um, we try to uh, make sure that we've got everything from the schools that we need, transcripts, et cetera, by February 9th. And then it's usually around mid-March where we uh, where we accept start accepting students. So that's the schedule. Um, all right, that is all I have. What other questions do we have? All right, Dr. Woods, we got. Uh, does the gym have a pool? <laughs> we have a student, so, a swimmer, a competitive swimmer. Gotcha. Yeah. So uh, the gym doesn't have a pool, but we have a pool right off of campus. Um, it's actually on a walking trail uh, that connects directly to the uh, Russellville City Pool. And for competitive swimmers, uh, we can, you can usually get a temporary membership there and you can work it out with your RAs so that you can go swim before class. Um, and so we've done that before. We also have like tennis facilities on campus uh, that we don't just kind of keep open to everybody. But if you're a tennis player and you need to work out, um, we can get you access to that. Um, and, you know, all of those kinds of things, we can pretty much facilitate for students as, as they need. Uh, we had another one. What are the gym hours or access um, to the gym? Yeah, so you're in class basically from about nine to noon. Um, and then we have a lunch period that goes from noon to about 1.30. Uh, and then you do your afternoon classes. We usually open up the gym after the afternoon classes um, and uh, run them uh, through like the, the dinner hour. Um, so we try to keep it open a couple of hours at least a day. Uh, sometimes we can get more than that, but it really depends on staffing. Um, those kinds of things can be expensive to staff and keep open all the time. And plus you, you would only be able to use it because of the schedule a couple hours a day anyway. Um, so yeah, we try to open up like two hours in the afternoon, two, three hours in the afternoon every day. I'm glad kids are interested in physical exercise. That's, that's a positive. Sure. Yeah, um, it's actually, I mean, it's a big part of it. it it's, you know, um, we, uh, we do a lot of group things too, but yeah, we want to encourage, particularly if you're an athlete and you're, you're, you know, you're going into your senior year and you're, you're committed to that and you want to keep in shape and we're all about that. Um, but, uh, you know, we can, we can make things work. Is there a track and jump pit available? Um, yeah, probably we can get access to that. Uh, the athletic department, uh, has been really nice to us. Um, and, uh, they're usually open to that as long as they're not in practices and using the facilities themselves. Uh, so, uh, I can't promise you anything, but it's definitely something that we can pursue. Uh, and, um, yeah, we can probably make that happen. Uh, is there a minimum GPA or an AP requirement to, for no. application? No, and it, it, it's a great question because I think people get trapped into this thing where they think that you have to be the perfect student across the board to go to governor school. And it's just not true. I mean, part of the reason that we have these different specialties is, is that you know, we want you to pursue something that where you have a, a particular gift or a particular talent, or you have something to share. Uh, and so, you know, now don't get me wrong, <laughs> you're gonna have to be a, a, a good student, but you don't have to be a perfect student, right? So if you're kind of uh, like a, a B student, but you're an amazing musician, man, apply to governor school. <laughs> right apply to the instrumental or choral music because it, that we want those kinds of people um also you know if you've just got something that you do that isn't even necessarily tied to school but it's something that you do 
in uh, your, your, your extra time. Um, we have so many students that are doing things outside of the classroom that are so interesting and so compelling. Uh, and what we want are people, we want students to be able to contribute to the community there. And, and honestly, it's, it's what your best universities want. What they want is students who are interesting and are gonna do something meaningful with their lives and can have an influence on the other students there and spark good discussions and open up doors for you know, faculty and students in the same way that you know, uh, hopefully they're reciprocating that. Uh, so you know, it's about building that um, kind of really interesting and meaningful community, I think. And so if you approach your, your applications that way, um, that's the best way to do it. Now, you know, again, sometimes those things matter, right? Uh, grades and AP requirements and, and doing all that stuff is great. You want to show that you're smart and that you're, uh, but you don't have to be perfect. So please, you know, if, if you want to do this, throw it out there, give it a, give it a shot. Uh, how much of an impact does governor school have on out of state college applications? Uh, it's, I mean, that's hard to measure, uh, but uh, anywhere that you apply, they're going to recognize governor school. Uh, so, you know, any college in, in the country will know what governor schools are and that they're competitive programs and uh, that they are, uh, these are students that are in a kind of special category. Um, and so that alone helps. It's another credential uh, to kind of add. And that's in-state and out-of-state. Um, and uh, honestly, when we poll our students, um, it's about 50-50 uh, whether they go to school in-state or out-of-state. So half of our students from AGS end up going to schools out-of-state. And they, <laughs> those students represent all of the um, best universities in the world, quite frankly. I think we are caught up on questions. Um, OK. Uh, one question that comes up a lot that I, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer just uh, is about um, about uh, how many people we accept and what your chances are of getting in. So the biggest uh, the biggest sort of barrier is actually the nomination from the school. Uh, once you're nominated by your school, then at least over the last three year period, it's bet we have a 70 to 80 percent um, acceptance rate. So I think the average over three years has been about 76 percent. Um, so your chances are really good. Now, all that depends on what the pool is for a given year. And so if we get a bunch more students applying this year, then th those percentages might change. But if history is a, is a, 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 a factor in this, uh, you've got a really good chance of getting in if you just apply. Right, you've got a, over a seventy percent chance of, of getting in. So, you know, um, please throw it out there, take a chance, right? And and teachers, if you've got students who you think, you know, this student is, they just need that door opened a little bit to kind of give them that special experience that will that will make them understand how valuable they are and how gifted they are and that they can really do something interesting with their life, man, please point them our direction. That's the kind of thing that we love. You know, perfect students are great and we'll take your perfect students, but they're not nearly as exciting and interesting as those students that are on the way up that just need a little nudge. They just need a little exposure to a bigger world uh, to make their lives sort of take off. So we're really looking for those kids. Yeah, and having read applications uh, for at least the last four or five years, I love the question about the idea that stretched their mind because you really get to see the kids that are memorable. And that, that's the one bit of advice I tell students when they ask me about, what do I need to do to apply for governor school? That's like, be authentic and be memorable. You know, don't yeah. give us what you think we want to hear. Yeah, and Dustin, I mean, you've already heard it in my presentation. I always stress the words meaningful and interesting. Mm -hmm. 
it's almost a philosophy of life for me, but that's, it, it, it's like, that's what we're looking for. You know, somebody that's going to do something meaningful and interesting. And so just kind of think about how do you, how do you show that to us? Right. And uh, be creative, you know, when it comes to these applications, because we're looking for something that stands out. It's also true, you know, even if this just ends up being practice for college applications, it's what your colleges are looking for also. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you, Dr. Woods, for joining us live from Washington, D.C. Yeah. And yeah. students, if you have a question, uh, I know Dr. Woods' email address is on the atu.edu slash AGS website. Uh, but if y'all, some several of y'all were saying you got kicked off or you wanted to co go back and watch this presentation, uh, it is live on our Facebook page, Agate Arkansans for Gifted and Talented Education. Uh, or you can go to giftedarkansas.org and, and check out the recording there as well. And I, I know Dr. Woods has been asked to speak at other high schools around the state. Um, and so that is something teachers, if you're interested in having a wider audience just for your school, reach out to Dr. Woods or Dr. Lacey at ATU and um, schedule that on, on your, uh, your side as well. Any other parting words, Dr. Woods? Otherwise, we can let you get back to your family. Now, my, my, my parting word is, is always the, the same one that, that I sort of repeat over and over again. Um, governor school is, uh, is kind of magical and I can't put my finger on it and it's hard to articulate, but there's something special that happens every summer. Um, and it, it's, it's this amazing, thing that develops when you put 400 really bright kids in the same place at the same time and kind of give them some freedom to think and and you know uh, uh, con contemplate their world it's just a really special thing so please think about it. it it's an amazing experience yeah absolutely and students please consider applying don't wait it sneaks up on you i i hear it all the time i meant to apply but it just it got the better of me. I got life happens and we understand that. Uh, will you tell us the deadline again, Dr. Woods? When's the deadline to apply? Yeah, January 24th. But again, uh, try to get that stuff done but before whatever your holiday break is. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you all very much. That concludes our webinar on the Arkansas Governor School with the director, Dr. Jeff Woods. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Dustin.